Over 50 years ago a marine biologist came up with the idea that at some time in our evolutionary past men had an aquatic presence. The idea was taken and developed by others, turning it into the aquatic ape theory. Since then, the growing evidence pointing to how our ancestors lived suggests there was no time spent in water, but the theory continues to be discussed today. Alice Roberts, professor of public engagement in science at the University of Birmingham, and Mark Maslin, professor of paleo Paleomatology at UCL explained the evidence against the aquatic ape theory in an article for The Conversation. Occasionally in science there are theories that refuse to die despite the overwhelming evidence against them. The aquatic ape hypothesis is one of these, now championed by Sir David Attenborough in his recent BBC Radio 4 series The Water Sun Ape. The hypothesis suggests that everything from walking upright to our lack of hair, from holding our breath to eating shellfish could be because an aquatic phase in our ancestry. Since the theory was first suggested more than 55 years ago, huge advances have been made in the study of human evolution and our story is much more interesting and complicated than suggested by the catch-all aquatic ape hypothesis. In 1960, marine biologist Alistair Hardy published an article in New Scientist titled Was Man More Aquatic in the Past? He retold the familiar tale of the evolution of land animals from ancient fish and then considered the return of various groups of reptiles, birds and mammals to an aquatic existence, ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, crocodiles, sea snakes, penguins, whales, dolphins and porpoises, manatees and dugongs and seals, as well as polar bears, otters and water voles who hunt in water. Then he suggested that many of the unique characteristics of humans and their ancestors marking them out as different from the other apes could be explained as adaptations to spending time in water. Hardy put forward all sorts of features which could be explained as aquatic adaptations our swimming ability and our enjoyment of it. Loss of body hair as well as an arrangement of body hair that he supposed may have reduced resistance in the water. Curvy bodies and the layer of fat under our skin. He even suggested that our ability to walk upright may have developed through wading with the water helping to support body weight. For Hardy, this aquatic phase would have occupied the gap in the fossil record that then existed between around 4 million and 7 million years ago. He sensibly concluded his paper saying that this was all only speculation, a hypothesis to be discussed and tested against further lines of evidence. In the 50 odd years since the presentation of this hypothesis, it has enjoyed a certain fame, or perhaps notoriety. The writer Elaine Morgan championed it in her book The Aquatic Ape and developed the hypothesis further, marshalling a seemingly impressive range of characteristics to support it, including breath control and diet. It seems such a tantalizing and romantic idea, but a closer look at the evidence reveals it to be little more than that. All the suggested anatomical and physiological adaptations can be explained by other hypotheses, which fit much better with what we actually know about the ecology of ancient hominins. For example, what about walking on two legs? That's something all apes do a bit of, while wading in water, certainly, but also while reaching for fruit, performing aggressive displays or simply moving around in trees. If we evolved from ancestors who already stood up in trees, we don't need an extraordinary explanation for why we ended up standing on the ground rather than running around on all fours. Since Hardy and Morgan's hypothesis was advanced, many of the gaps in the human fossil record have been filled, with at least 13 new species found since 1987. We have also made great strides in reconstructing the environment in which our ancestors lived, and we know that species as far as part in time as Sahelanthropus chidensis 7 million years ago and Homo erectus 2 million years ago all lived in forested or open woodland environments, while some of these woods included wetland. This was just part of the mosaic of habitats that our ancestors learned to survive in, and there is absolutely no trace of a hominin ancestor as aquatic as that described by Hardy and Morgan. We also have evidence our ancestors had to survive periods of extremely dry climate with little or no aquatic resources. Coping with these highly variable patchwork environments required behavioral flexibility and cooperation, and our large brains and ultra-social nature likely emerged as a result. This flexibility ultimately led to the invention of culture and technology. Recent proponents of the aquatic ape hypothesis have pointed to much later watery adaptations including early archaeological sites where humans have been shown to be exploiting coastal resources. But these don't have much to say 
say about the origins of bipedalism more than six million years before they just demonstrate the behavioral flexibility of later hominins.